In terms of diet, if I'm kind of just, you know, everyday Joe off the street, do you recommend some sort of elimination diet? Like if I'm not feeling well, if I don't have a lot of energy, if I hit that 2 p.m. like, oh my God, I'm crashing, do you recommend like maybe start with taking out gluten, maybe start with taking out dairy? Yeah. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Like I think if you're a person, um, you know, and a lot of times I get approached about this with kids. Like a mom comes to me and says, hey, like my kid's having X, Y, Z. So for example, if your kid's having like behavioral issues, learning issues, um, if anybody's having skin issues, joint pain, uh, fatigue, um, autoimmune symptoms are crazy. There's a huge list, right? Yeah. So like there's so many different things that could be autoimmune. In, 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 uh, and I've had a ton of autoimmune symptoms, no disease. Like no, again, you know, doctors, oh, you're fine. You don't have disease. Well, shit, I'm not fine. I feel like hell. Right. Like I'm not fine. Yeah. So that's one of those things where... Um, you know, again, the traditional doctor might not help you. So yes, an elimination diet is a great place to start. And so that doesn't cost any money. It just takes some time. And so what I would do is I would, um, I mean, and if it's like a really sick person, you could get as strict as literally going on like a straight meat, like grass-fed beef. Like all you have is grass-fed beef for like three to five days. You know, you could try to have some variations. Mm -hmm. And then you start to bring in like different types of meat or fish or you start to bring in vegetables. Um, But I mean, I would tell anybody who's having health issues, eat meat and vegetables for like, if you could make it 14 days, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. And then bring back like one thing in, you know, bring back in white rice or white potato or, and, and here's the deal, like nightshades, and a lot of different vegetables people don't do well with. So like, per, so like nightshades are a f- type of vegetable and um, certain vegetables have, okay, so taking a step back, there's like a lot, like s- most supplements come from plants, mm-hmm. right? So plants have different nutrients or chemicals in them that are protective of the plant. So the seed can grow and can flourish and can reproduce. Okay. And so those chemicals can actually be somewhat inflammatory or harmful for people who have autoimmune disease. The average person who's fine, who has great gut health, is not going to be affected. But a person who has autoimmune disease or symptoms could be affected by that. And so certain plants, vegetables, are going to create an inflammatory or an immune response in people that could be negative. Mm -hmm. Now, that's most likely in grains. So most grains you know, a lot of people are reactive to them. So they're, they're pro-inflammatory. The one that we always hear about is gluten. And so gluten is the protein from wheat um, that has been hybridized and changed. And the reason people say, oh, well, like, you know, my grandparents never had this problem. Well, they weren't eating the same stuff that we are. You know, mm-hmm. it's been completely changed and modified. As and, processed, right? Yeah, Monsanto wasn't around when, when grandma was around, you know. And, <laughs> and if you also look at like our grandparents, like our grandparents ate a super high fat diet, mm-hmm. lard and raw cream and yeah. butter and whatever. They didn't have any of this bullshit like fake butters and fake sugars and, and whatever. You know, like they ate like meat and potatoes, you know, and they put a bunch of butter on stuff mm-hmm. and that was normal and like heavy cream and. It was real food. It, it was real food. Yeah, it was real food. Like it might have been higher fat, but it was real food. And so like that's one of the biggest things that I don't like is that like fat is villainized. Like fat's not the problem. Like if it's coming from properly raised animal sources or more natural sources, like if you're getting man-made seed oils, which is like canola oil, cotton seed oil, um, things like that that are like highly processed man-made fat oil, that, that's bad. Those are pro-inflammatory. But like if you are if you have like raw dairy you know, cream or grass fed beef or well caught fish, the fats in those things, that's not the problem. And and it's overly villainized because people just group fat as like one big bad thing. Yeah. You know? There's good fats. Absolutely. I mean people talk about, you know, avocados and like you said, salmon, fish, omega three fatty acids, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think what's interesting to me is when I go to the grocery store, I get like very conflicted because fat has been, like you said, villainized. And so then you see these processed foods that say like lower fat, less right. fat, and you're kind of tempted to grab for those. But generally then what you're trading out is the chemicals, right? Yeah. The process. So it's kind of like, okay, I choose the fat or the cancer potentially right. or the inflammatory. So it's it's a hard thing, I think, for right. most people to know what to buy. I've always kind of heard stay to the outside of the yep. grocery store, right? Because that's where yep. your real foods are. Yep. Um, 
So yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So what do you recommend in terms of going to the store? I want to start if I'm starting with food, right? If right. I'm starting with diet. Right. What do you kind of tell people to start with? I mean, if they're yeah. switching from a high fat, like high bad fat, diet, right. To a good fat diet. So the biggest thing that I talk about, and I've talked about this many times, in, in like if you are eating a standard American diet and you do anything, you're probably going to get improvement, right? So if you do a keto diet, a paleo diet, a vegetarian, a vegan, a, a, a pescatarian, like you name it, like if you do any diet, I and mean, even count macros, like if you just move move the needle from standard American diet towards anything, you're going to make progress, mm-hmm. right? You're going to feel better. You're going to get results. So the thing is, is like we get these people that make a little bit of improvement and they think that, oh my God, like my diet's the only way, like it has mm-hmm. to be this way. And like, you know, I'm probably guilty of that 10 years ago, like thinking that like, the, the, you know, I was a big fan of a paleo type diet, which is the real food diet, meat and vegetables. I still am a fan of that. Now, do I realize that like there's other things that can work for people? Absolutely. But my advice to people is, you know, one of my mentors and friends, Sean Croxton, um, trademarked the term jerf just eat real food, you know, and it like sounds simple, but it's like, yo, just eat real food, like meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, properly raised animal proteins, you know, like just eat real food. And there's tons of variations and fun things you can do with that, but it's a little bit more work than buying the packaged food. So here's the thing, like I always start people off, I think one of the biggest misconceptions that people get is, and there's so many really smart people online and there's tons of people like in the fitness world who are obsessed with calorie counting and macros, okay? And that absolutely works and has a place. So I'm not saying that that doesn't work or like that shouldn't be a part of it, but for the person who's like the standard American diet just moving in the right direction, like that's kind of overwhelming to weigh and measure all your food, okay? So like if you're a competitive athlete or you're pretty far advanced, I think that's a good a good model for the person who likes that. Most people will never be able to stick with weighing and measuring food for any length of time. So what I tell a new client who used to come on and work with me, I would say, hey, look, well, let's do this. I'm going to give you some parameters, and you can eat whatever you want, as much as you want, but you just have to eat real food. So for the next three days, you know, you're going to send me a picture of everything you eat. You can eat as much as you want, as late as you want, as early as you want. You can do anything, but you can only eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar, no processed foods. Let me know how it goes. And they're like, shit, okay, I can do that. You know, because you don't have to count anything, you don't have to measure anything, eat as much as you want. I don't give a shit if you have two steaks, like every meal, like you won't, but like you could if you want, right? So I always tell people, we're going to do that for three days. You're going to check in with me. And then if you go well, if it goes well, we're going to extend it for the first seven and then we're going to have another phone call and we're going to check in. Mm -hmm. 99.9% of people who do that feel better. And they're like, dang, it was pretty easy. Like I had to prepare food, I had to be pl- I had to plan ahead, but mm-hmm. it was pretty easy. Mm-hmm. And I say, okay, here's the deal. Now on you know week two, what we're gonna do is we're still not gonna count any calories, we're still not gonna count macros, but I wanna just tighten things up a little. You know, like it looks like you were kind of going crazy on the fruit, or you know, you had way too many sweet potatoes or mm-hmm. whatever. So I wanna get a little bit more aware of a balanced meal. Okay, so like I want you to have a properly raised animal protein with some vegetables and maybe like a small amount of a starch, you know, like a yams or sweet potatoes or squash or something like that, like if it's a dinner. And we get a little bit more dialed in. And then I say, but don't worry, because like we're not going to start counting calories and macros until like next week. Right. And so then they go week two, all of a sudden they're down like seven, eight pounds in the first 14 days. And I'm like, holy shit, this is easy. I can do this. And I was like, I lied to you. We're never going to count macros and calories. We're just going to keep doing what you're doing, eating real food. Because it's working. It's working. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then they just, they let it go, right? Right. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's the most important thing is if you're somebody that initially wants to lose a lot of weight, right? Right. There are literally changing anything that you're currently doing is going to impact that. Right. But if you want to keep it off. You yep. have to be able to sustain it. So you have to come up with something realistic right. to allow yourself to continue to do that. Because a lot of people fall back into the old things because they're like, this is so stressful. I'm counting calories. I'm counting macros. Mm-hmm. I'm putting it in an app every single day. It's, it's a lot of work for you know, somebody some, that just can't sustain that. For Yeah, for a professional, absolutely. The, um, but, there's some weirdos that love data. That like, like, sure. like they kind of like like that, and it helps them, and that's cool. Like if you like, if that's your thing, do it. You know, yeah. and, and honestly, like if you do it, you probably will get pretty dialed in and know what works for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, I found that like in general, 
like for my client base, like a lot of times women do a little better with more carbs than men, you know, like 40 and over, like, um, a lot of men do really well on a higher fat, higher protein diet mm -hmm. and they're just super carb sensitive. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about people who like really need to lose weight. Like, okay. you know, not, maybe not the average person, yeah. but you know, somebody who's pretty healthy, who's pretty fit, they can bring in some carbs, mm -hmm. you know, like carbs aren't, aren't the end all be all. Um, I mean, car carbs are not all also, like fat has been demonized as like, oh, fat's horrible. Like that's not true. But the, it's also not true that like you can't touch carbs. Mm -hmm. But like people don't understand that like when they think of carbs, they think of pizza and pasta and sugar and crap. Right. No, like I'm talking about like white potato, white rice, like sweet potato, squash, you yeah. know, like complex, good carb. Yeah, carbs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Real good carbs.